Well, I'm good now. Because when you say a long time, I think people don't actually oh, yeah. realize how long we've been trying to get a show together to work out. Oh, we're like, muted. Literally, I think it's four years now. Dan, we're muted. We've been we've been talking to people and trying to figure out and like, go. can we can we get this done? And we gotta start over. We, were, yeah. we gotta start. Classic. You were muted, or I was muted. You couldn't even hear me. I was like, Dan, no, we're muted. But guys, that's exactly what you can expect, all right? That it's just Dan and I Wait, having we a muted? we were muted. So I got to I'm going to roll it back. You ready? Oh, really? Yeah. Roll it back. Shit. Here we go. Okay. Here's what I say. I, it sucks too cuz I told people the secret to StarCraft. I actually had it solved and I was like, "You know what? I'll oh share it." Oh my god. Yeah. But no, not anymore. Anyways, guys, welcome. Welcome to the Pylon show, <laughs> the best named <laughs> show ever. Uh, we are your hosts. I'm Jeff Ingator Robinson, and he is, of course, Dan Artosis Demkowski. He was also telling you the secret of StarCraft, but you know what? Yeah. We're going to roll it back. We're, gonna, we're not going to tell you the secret. We'll save that for the season finale in 2029. Uh, but Dan, <laughs> how the hell are you, buddy? Well, I'm very good, and I can't do this as genuinely as before, but <laughs> I uh, what I was talking about when we were muted was the fact that it has actually been something like four years that we've been trying to get this. Yeah together and get this going and we've explored a lot of avenues to to do that and eventually we jointly said fuck it let's just make this let's just throw on your channel it's going to go up on my youtube yep. and stuff and just make this a reality uh so i'm happy that it's finally starting and i can talk more starcraft with you that's the segue normally i do this big long like how are we but you guys you guys hear us talk all the time we're around so i'm we're just going to jump into subject one which is exactly what Dan just touched on, because I think that's a really hilarious and funny story. This will also be, you know, it's the first episode. We'll usually have guests, but we want to talk about what it took to get to where we are right now, what we have kind of envisioned for the show, so that pushing forward, you guys can know. So when Dan says we've been working on this for four years, we're actually not joking. That's, that's, yeah. uh, you know, how sometimes me included, I'm like, wow, we've been doing this thing for 25 fucking years. And people are like, Haha, what is it actually? And it's like, well, it's been two months. No, no. Four years, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like that many BlizzCons ago, we approached the Moorheims, we approached some of the, our friends at, at Blizzard, and we were just like, look, one of the things missing, one of the things that needs to be done is a talk show. And it's it was great. We had State of the Game. We had, you know, uh, Inside the Game for a little while there, too. We, we've had these shows where people can kind of begin to talk about StarCraft, but it's it's uh, it's been harder since then. There's still our shows doing it. You know, shout out to Dank Shrine. Uh, and some of these guys that do do these shows, but it's important to have more options. And, and Dan and I have been working on that that long. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad that we finally just pulled the trigger and are doing it. And it looks great. So cheers to all the guys helping us out. Cobra. Yeah. Uh, definitely doing a lot behind the scenes and all that. And this is going to be great, man. Like, uh, I kind of like that we're doing it on our own and yeah. can just kind of do whatever we want. It's especially going to be cool to... Uh, to watch an unleashed in control and talk about what he thinks is stupid and what is smart. A half unleashed. The the old the yes. old wild in control got into a lot of trouble saying oh, a little bit too much of his opinion. But I, I do want to point out this kind of funny thing, right? Yeah. So there's this terrible meme that goes around that yeah. I start a lot of shows and don't finish them. Now of course like all memes about me, you started it. I uh, you're the originator. That. You're the originator of this meme. But now you're making a show with me. So Yeah. How long until the show's canceled? Well, it's funny. This is like a look at the two pros here going back and forth because this is still on topic, Dan. I was ready to talk about this very subject as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> setting up expectations for you guys. We're excited to do this. We think this is something we need to do. Uh, jokes aside, that was actually one of the things that it was. It kind of sucked, but when we were like, "Hey, we're doing the show," people's like, "It was like it was. It wasn't fifty fifty, but there was enough comments. That I was like, really? That's the first thing you think of?" And they're like. Are Toth is doing it? <laughs> well, when are they gonna quit? And it's like, yeah, okay. Well, let's let's touch on that subject. So, because uh, it kind of ties into what we did to to get into this as well. Um, when we say we worked on it for four years, we mean it. Uh, this last year, not year, but let's call it six, five months, five ish <laughs> months. Five -ish. Working with Blizzard, talking to them, being like, hey, we want to do the show. And like when Dan said, fuck it, we're just gonna do it. That's kind of what happened. Is we wrote a script, we made a proposal. We pitched it to Blizzard. We're like, this is needed. We want it. And the response was like, yeah, yeah, that, that's a good, that's a good idea. That's a good, we want that. And I was like, and, and it was a weird moment because, you know, we're not going to, we love Blizzard. We have a ton of friends there. They're amazing. They're the reason we're, we're here talking about the show. But like, it was, it was, a, it caught me off guard. Anyways, 
what will keep this show going, what will keep this alive, because we are not doing it with Blizzard. They're, they're supporting us. They're awesome. But this is Dan, myself, Cobra, uh, and some other people helping out with like the graphics and music and stuff. This is us. So if you guys like it, if you're watching it, make sure and support it. That doesn't mean you need to break out your wallet and throw $500 bills at us. It just means... If you like it, watch it, share it, talk about it, and that's it. If you can do more, do more. If you don't need to do more, don't do more. And and that's enough for us, I think, right, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we we are not in esports to get rich. If we were, maybe we'd be going into Fortnite or something at this point. But <laughs> I was just gonna say, you what know? would you do to get rich in esports? What what is your what would have been your master plan? To get rich in esports? Yeah. Ooh, I'm putting on the well, spot. I could I could be one of the 50 million people out there that's an esports consultant that's never done anything oh, in esports. That's all. That's always a very good way. Um, you know, you, you just like a professional streamer of the popular games. That's a good way to get yeah. rich. It seems. Uh, you know, but I think I'd rather just live a normal existence and play StarCraft. PUBG caster in the chat, Cannibal Sheep, you dirty Sly Fox. Okay. So that's it. So just to kind of wrap up topic number one, guys, when we, when we say that this has been a long time coming, we mean it. We've been actually working on it for a long time. We're excited about it. But the plan is every Wednesday, this time, we come on and we talk some StarCraft. We're going to have guests on in the future. Uh, this can be any shape or size. This can be Idra. It can be Tyler. It can be... I, I actually asked Apollo, but unfortunately he's moving or something next Wednesday, mm -hmm. so he couldn't make it. But we're, we're reaching out to different people. I'd love to have uh, Rifkin on or Fear Dragon and just people of every different yeah. shapes and size, some tasteless. If you guys want to talk some battle toads, we can get a tasteless on here. <laughs> right? Oh yeah, I can't wait for that. It'll be a great one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if we, if we're doing this every single week, you know, occasionally we'll miss an episode, I'm sure, yeah. because of travel and stuff. But uh, I hope to get like everyone on. And this is StarCraft One. This is StarCraft Two. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's. There's more going on in StarCraft 2, and we'll get into that more later, but, uh, you know, it's, I, I think we'll end up hitting upon basically everything that matters over time. Yep. That's the plan. We want to highlight people, and we want to just tie up the community and, and talk StarCraft. So, that's what you guys can expect. Thank you for putting up with our, our spiel, um, and we'll move on to subject number two. So, subject okay. number two we have here is that we just wrapped up the StarCraft 2... <laughs> or not StarCraft 2, excuse me, just the StarCraft 20-year celebration. Blizzard reached out and grabbed a bunch of community people and did it in kind of all-encompassing ways, very different. Um, and, and it was pretty, pretty cool. So, Dan, to just kick things off, I want to ask you about what you thought of specifically the celebration, then we can talk about 20 years of StarCraft, of course. But what did you think of it? I mean, it was really fun. I was very happy to be there and a part of it. It sucked that Sean got sick and couldn't come the next day, but um, a good group of people there. It was definitely fun, like, seeing the old faces. I think people really enjoyed seeing, like, Huck and I to play again. And, you know, just... It, I wish that it wouldn't have been as many free-for-alls and team games because yeah. no one there ever plays those and you can't really commentate them and they even make the game lag. So I thought that that was kind of silly. But, uh, you know, we definitely had a good amount of one-versus-ones and, and fun two-versus-twos and stuff. So uh, it's, it's hard, I mean, too, because I, I, I try to, like... You and I definitely come from the competitive side, so I, I, when I heard it was not going to be a tournament and I heard it was going to be mostly fun games, I was immediately disappointed and, and, and just didn't like that idea. And that was kind of, uh, even the holiday bash, that was kind of in, pushed a little <clears throat> bit from the Blizzard side. But I'm trying to be more open and, just, and, and it's kind of yeah. apropos that the 20-year celebration, like, look, it isn't just the hardcore players that, that play StarCraft or enjoy it. Uh, and in Certainly. fact, a lot of people have you know, the majority of their playtime and their history was UMS stuff. So I try to be more open minded of that, but I'm, I'm even the more curmudgeon old guy than Dan is. I think Dan's going to be the, the happy guy here. Cause, cause I, it was okay. It turned out fine because of the format, because we were just like loose and, and having a good time. And like you said, the good people there, but I don't know. I, I thought it sucked. The, the free for alls and all the, the, like you get these like legendary good players that haven't played in forever. And then you're like, now you're going to play in a format you never played to. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird. A little bit weird on that one, but, but it's uh, cool that Blizzard did it. And I was yeah, watching no, they, so, overall yeah. just having the event is, is sick because it's like all these people that have had so much to do with the game for their entire life. Yeah. It's nice. And one of the nice things they're doing too, that I really like, and I think this is amazingly thoughtful <laughs> They've been sending out um, StarCraft like tokens and coins uh, in a in a like a a letter 
that says, you know, thank you for your contributions to StarCraft. And on, on, on my Facebook, it's not just data mining, and it's not just my information being sold to the Russian government, but also it showed me a picture of, do you remember Eminem? It was her handle. Yeah. I can't remember her name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Someone, um, someone at StarCraft, someone at ah, Blizzard. Was it Michelle, I think? I mean, yeah, was but it? I, maybe. This is like everyone in the chat said. I remember her very well. She was at like every event back in the day. She worked for Team Liquid, guys. She did a lot of cool stuff, but she hasn't been a part of StarCraft for years. But she she did a lot for Team Liquid. Um, and she was at some of these WCG events and stuff like that. My point is, they sent her a coin and they sent some of these other community people a coin just saying thank you for helping with StarCraft. And I think that's... Oh, that's really super cool because she was a huge part of the community back then, actually. Yeah. Like, she was always at the events. She was one of the only people that had a camera and taking pictures. Yep. Because it started back, you know, before people really had cameras, and it was actually hard to get pictures onto a computer. And most people, you didn't know what they looked like until you met them at a LAN. <laughs> that was yes. a big chunk of, of StarCraft time. The magic of LANs. Um, I do miss that. That, And it's like, it's. It, I miss it in a way that, like, I, I miss college. I don't want to go back to college. Like, that time in my life is come mm. and gone. But I missed the small upstart feel that we had at those lands where it was dan and cargo pants nyokin in like a, a golf hat and a you know collared yeah. shirt um and it just felt very small ridiculous but awesome and we cared so much that we didn't care you know, well we cared so much that we didn't care that we looked stupid i guess and it was really fun mm -hmm. well i think there is something of that missing nowadays because yeah. that is so fundamental to esports is having some of the smaller land tournaments and just having land tournaments where you can yeah. meet these people and play these people everything's become so professionalized at this point uh and obviously it's nice in a way because uh, there's a bunch of people that make a living and it kind of like it's become more mainstream whatever the hell yeah. that means nowadays um but yeah there's there's something there's like a hole there um where we're not Help me out here. It's it, it's well, it's it like MLG? hard to put Did my MLG finger on that. You think or yeah, MLG was the in between, and I think that's why people like really appreciate that. Like these giant open bracket type situations. Like you just sign up for an MLG and you go down, and it kind of has that feel where it's like, well, you know, anyone you have a good day if you're good enough, here yeah. you are. Um, and I mean, it's great to have all these qualifiers and stuff, and I think WCS is actually going very well right now, and I don't want to lose that. Um, but yeah, there's like there's the open the open format of having some yep. StarCraft tournaments and just being like, hey, this is a big tournament. If you're good or you just want to have fun and you have the money to to spare, you can come here and play and stuff. And I wish we still had a bit of that. It's interesting because I absolutely agree, and it's it's one of those subjects where I feel like you can't have it both ways, and we're definitely going in the right direction, like you said, and you kind of acknowledge things professionalizing is good, people making a, mm -hmm. a living players of the caliber of Neeb are emerging from places in the world where, you know, previously that didn't really happen, but I yeah. do miss, and I, I, it's it, not to get way too off topic. And, and guys, this is a danger, by the way, Dan are like two hour show could be a nine hour show, <laughs> up. Uh, but like it, it absolutely could be that. Uh, now I lost my train of thought. Cause that joke, I guess I was trying to say just, I liked the amateurish lands and I missed that. But mm. they have to kind of go by the wayside in order to get where we're going, I guess. Um, the the money's not there. And like it used to be that that was how companies made money is they just advertise and we're like, hey, at this land, people are showing up and people will say dream hack and stuff like that. Uh, that business model works for them. But like, I don't know. Mm. Do, you, do you know, like they're going to have an open bracket at WCS Austin, but it's just different. Mm. I think you should sign up and play at it. But in that bracket, if like in Showtime did qualify, I believe, but like let's say Showtime doesn't qualify, he's in there. Yeah. That wasn't what happened to us when we went to lands in the past. Like there wasn't just a random flash or nada in there and you're like, oh, cool. I, just, I got destroyed. Yeah. And I mean, if you go far enough back though, I guess the lands were a little bit like that where like, mm. you know, like back in WCG USA, like qualifier times, right? the country would be divided up and like people would show up to a land and it'd be a lot of fun, but there would be someone that was there and it was going to win it. <laughs> yeah. if you hit the dead. <laughs> so in a way that still, that still did exist back then. Okay. Fair enough. Hmm. Um, and then also at the Starcraft 20 year celebration, we had um, the event that w went on and it coincided with Twitch actually beforehand. 
uh, where they did the single player <laughs> playthrough, the the hyper crazy thing that mm. Destiny ended up winning. Stephen Bonnell himself uh, just came in, stayed awake for I think it was, I think at one time I want to say something like fifty two oh. hours or something. It took him yeah, a total he... of sixty two, I believe, but he stayed up for yeah. like forty or something. Yeah, the Upper Tree Zelda I was actually talking to, he explained a lot of this to me. It sounded really cool. I felt I, like, I don't know if it was like advertised super well because I kind of knew it was going on, but I wasn't aware of exactly, you know, yeah. what was on the line and all that. And it was, I mean, that's a lot of money and stuff. But yeah, kind of cool that Destiny just pops in and does it in an intelligent way and bam, like over the course of two gigantic streaming sessions, uh, wins the entire thing. And I like that they had like, for instance, another um, whole like uh, what was it? A thousand dollars for whoever did that? Oh yeah, the the Lost Vikings bullet hell game or whatever. So I I think that stuff like that's really cool. And I saw a lot of people tweeting like, "Oh, here's some mm -hmm. free for alls going on," and uh, kind of neat because that's the, that's the first time I've actually seen free for alls. People excited about them at all? So. Yeah, maybe that's I, part of why we did that in San Francisco. Is it had you know I think a lot of people like to watch that when everyone was kind of competing in the free for alls and stuff. So they're like, oh yeah, this is cool. This is a cool format. I think at the outward glance, it was really cool. It, it's just cool that they made such a spectacle of twenty years of StarCraft that it wasn't just like, here's a show, here's a tournament. We made a video. Congrats. Let's move on. We don't care anymore. It, it was very <laughs> clear that. Blizzard cared a lot, and they reached out and touched different community members. They did it different ways. They, like I said, they coincided with Twitch. They did the big show with with us in San Francisco as well. So that's really cool. Even a panel at PAX East. Um, but I, I I can't help but to be critical of the business side of this. And you you mentioned a little thing that basically I could make an entire show out of. I'm sure of it. But it wasn't advertised for the most part, and the money was really severe. It was ten thousand dollars for first place. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in the single player thing, it was like eight thousand, then six, then four, something along those lines. It was like twenty five thousand dollars in total. Um, these personalities were paid just to participate, by the way, and, and I was one of them. So I'll tell you, we're paid very well. Um, and then in the free for alls, you earn cash there. They 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 brought in base trade to commentate it. They brought in some other organizations. So it's really cool how they did it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, a a, com a complete problem that that StarCraft mm -hmm. Two specifically, and, and we're gonna get to StarCraft Remastered here towards the end. And this problem is might as well be the the Black Plague for them. But like, there's there's things that get invested, and there's events that get put on, but they're not given their due diligence. Um, and the the ability for them to be shown off and to reach the most amount of people and get the more bang for their buck is diminished. And this was a good example of that not doing it. And I feel terrible. It's so much money. It's a great event. Mm. But it could have been a bigger deal. Yeah. Well, this kind of links back to what we opened the show talking about. Uh, and it, it, to some other things as well. Like, for instance, where do you get your things advertised in StarCraft, right? Okay, well, everyone in StarCraft kind of uses Twitter. But obviously, you know, it's a timeline. It goes down. Uh you know, that, that's not going to be like, if you if you miss a day, then you might miss the whole thing unless people continue to talk about it. Then there's like Team Liquid, which, you know, they kind of put up some news and the forums are a little bit active, but it's not what it once was. Uh, and then you have StarCraft Reddit. That's probably the main place right now. And obviously things get upvoted and sit there and then eventually they go away. But there's not like an actual website for StarCraft. Yeah. And I know I mean, that there's there like is, some WCS website it's not that used, no one uses. Right? Yeah, exactly. Huh? Okay. No, yeah. no, you, you hit it. There is a website. It's just that that didn't become the community hub, I guess. Yeah. So there's there's no real community hub. And then, you know, this other aspect, like, uh, yeah, I think this is actually something that this show will help with, right? If there's something yes. cool like that. Wow. You need you need Good. something. And this is, this is part of the reason why Jeff and I wanted to make the show is there needs to be linking together of everything. Yeah. There's like these storylines don't connect. It's like we have we have two different main storylines. We have the WCS cast, you know, right? So we have like WCS and then at each WCS, you're talking about the previous WCS and that kind of connects it. And then at GSL, it's always Nick and I. So we talk about what happened in the previous GSL, right? And then we go forward. So there's like these two storylines, but there's not like a lot of connection for everything together. And I think that that is one of the main reasons why we need a show like this weekly where we can actually kind of, you know, bring it all together. And yep. be like, okay, well, here's this cool thing, and 
what's happening next week. Oh yeah, we're definitely going to keep up with this and follow this and see what's going on here. So yeah, and I think little... touching on it, like the, just a <laughs> fuck it, we'll do it live type of moment here. But um, we talked a lot about this when we were conceptualizing the show. But for those of you listening right now, if you're a fear dragon, a base trader, some of these guys, dark dark dink shrine, um, let us know if. Uh, if you're doing something in, in like uh, the coming weeks or whatever, hit us <laughs> up. And I think we could, we should, we should open up with a segment of like, here's what's coming up just to, to do that, Dan. I think that could yep. be like our ongoing subject where we were like, here's the stuff showing up. Nick and Dan are commentating this, this next week. Fear Dragons at this thing, base trades putting on a mm -hmm. tournament. And I think mm -hmm. that'd be a cool idea. So we'll, hold yeah, us accountable. Like, tell us to do that and we'll do it. It's like, hey, this is Challengers this week and check that out. And, you know, here it's. Like, oh man, looks like Bion is being interviewed by Dank Shrine. That's gonna be that's gonna be pretty sick. You know, like we want to just promote StarCraft with this. Yeah. There's a reason Jeff and I remain in this game. Did that my camera just switch to like a different <laughs> Cobra's back there, man. He's doing magic and stuff. You just you sit back that's and buckle like, up. I have two webcams plugged in. I guess people just saw some hearts that my daughter drew for me in a thing of tape. But anyways, uh no, I like all the like I want all of these things to be mentioned and for people to find the content that they want to watch and be able to yeah. watch those things. And for Starcraft to just like do well, it, we still have the best esports game in the whole world. We do, but we don't, it, there's like a lot of shit missing here that needs to be filled in and needs to be connected. And I don't know. It, it, I hope that we can help with that. And don't worry guys, future shows won't be just us tooting our own horn. We'll do that for half the time, not, not the whole time like this, but I'm yeah. just kidding. But uh, no, I, I like that. We're no, it will be the whole time. <laughs> okay, you're right. That's probably true. So um, message the the, uh, the Twitter or hit us up individually or whatever if you're a content creator. Let us know. But that's that's one of our things we're pushing forward. Um, so moving on to the next subject. Uh, and this one is this one gets gets a little bit more fun, I think. Um, so sure. We're going to touch on the WCS con uh, controversy that we've had in this last week. Um, so Cobra's going to pull yes. up some graphics here to kind of show what we're talking about. But just to intro it, in case you didn't hear about this, uh, and then we'll begin to talk about it. So the WC WCS qualifiers are going on right now. I, sp I think specifically North America, um, those qualifiers. But in these qualifiers, players of all different shapes and sizes are fighting for their position in WCS to get into Challenger uh, or to get into the actual WCS bracket itself, which is huge. You get money just for qualifying. Um, if you make it to WCS Austin as one of the winners, you actually get flown there, I believe. And you're just guaranteed money. It's just, it, it is how you be a professional in StarCraft 2 right now. Um, in those qualifiers, a notorious player, Avalo, or Avilo, I call him Avilo, some people, Nathaniel says Avalo, I think, and then it just messed my brain up. No, you're right. It's you're right. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Get out of here, Nathaniel. Anyways, yeah. Avilo, you guys know him. Um, he's a popular StarCraft 2 streamer. He was on the uh, American team for Nation Wars, and he's just, uh, whether you like him or, or, or not, he's a big personality in the StarCraft 2 scene. He was facing a guy called the Riddler. The Riddler is someone I'm not intimately aware of or know very well, but I've hit him a bunch on the ladder. Um, and he played under the exact same count, because this is ridiculous <laughs> in StarCraft 2 that you can do this, but it was Avilo against Avilo, uh, the same names and everything. Um, and they ended up playing a Terran versus Terran game. Game one went, I believe, an hour and a half long. And it was like one of the final <clears throat> matches of the night. So this is like eight hours into the tournament and these guys are playing this game. Number one ends up going so long and gets to a stalemate or at least that's uh, kind of well, a that's stalemate. Where, that's where the yeah, drama let me finish. really let me finish. Yeah, I know. Let me finish. So okay, let me, go ahead. Let me give right. people what's going on here. I'm excited. I'm sorry. Go I know. It's good drama. <laughs> uh, things aren't really progressing very well in the game, so Avilo just kind of declares and, and, and I guess asks the judge, but, you know, judges are watching. They're not like... He didn't, like, contact an embassy or something like that, and he just says, hey, nothing's happening. I'd like a draw. <laughs> and the, the judge made a ruling without the Riddler's consent, as far as I understand. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Enough. Um... Looks like we have a little video here. And meanwhile... Or maybe Cobra's just preparing that. We can't see. We're getting used to the production. Anyways. Um, so th so he asked for a draw. The judge says, sure, there's a draw. And the game just... Boop! It's a draw. They have to replay it. But because it took so yeah. long, they actually had to redo it the next day. So that's what happened. Dan, what the fuck? Yes. Let, let me fill in just a little tiny bit. Because you basically do. nailed it. Uh, the game that Avilo asked for a draw, the Riddler was winning. 
It's a very turtly stalemate position with like things like battle cruisers with Yamato and uh, you know ravens and stuff like that. And the Riddler was ahead; he had more money and stuff. Avila wanted the the draw; they gave the draw, and we'll get into that in a minute because that's fucking crazy. But yes, then uh, they regamed, and it got into the exact same position again, and the Riddler ended up winning eventually. Um, and from there, the Riddler actually got a warning. So we have to talk about each portion of this. Start, and we should start probably with the draw, though. Let's let's unfold the this. draw chronologically. Yeah, okay. there's a lot to unpack here, but let's start with the draw. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, first, I do want to put. I want to do a little virtue signaling here. Okay. Admins are underappreciated. Okay, it's a hard job. It's a loveless job. <laughs> They get shit on a lot. There's a big ass okay. butt coming. I can feel it. But <laughs> you can't. There is a draw mechanic within StarCraft 2. Yeah. There is an actual. The game will draw itself. In StarCraft 1, you might need to talk to both the players and say, hey, do you think. What, what do you think about this, right? And the thing is, when. There used to not be a draw mechanic in StarCraft 2. Yeah. And we had a couple draws in professional play, and it would be like. They would pause and ask the players, and then one of the players might say, no, I think I can still win. Then they play a little bit more. I remember a specific game with Sulky versus some Terran, where they pause, and the Terran's like, no, I think I can still win. And 20 minutes later, he's like, I can't win. This is a draw. Okay. It became a draw. They play it again. Um, that would be how you would do it if there was not a way that the game draws itself. But if the game will draw itself, if you hit the conditions for drawing, which is like not mining and nothing back, which that's a those are good conditions. That makes sense, yeah. right? If you're not mining anything and nothing's dying, that means the game is going to draw, right? And it, it gives you a couple minutes or something. So it's so crazy that they did a that they just gave a draw there. That can anyone argue that that's fair? No, it's bad, Dan. It, it, raise your hand. <laughs> they didn't even defend it. I don't. I don't believe. It. I think it was more of a non-answer when they kind of. Um, did end up like moving past this and we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk about further unpacking, but just to give my two cents on this, mm. it's been done before, by the way, guys. And, and I love them. And we, I mentioned them earlier, but actually Apollo was commentating a match at a, a dream hack five years ago or whatever it was. The game just slowed down to a stalemate situation. And without being asked, he typed in is, you know, draw or question mark, or like, is this a, you know, sh should we redo? And that put it in the players' heads. The guy that was like slightly behind and probably would lose 45 minutes later was like, yep, is it a draw? Let's do it. Uh, or no, it's like a floating base situation, but he definitely could have won and the other guy could not have. But because mm -hmm. Sean said that, the, judge, the judges had to be like, whoa, pause. And they had to have a meeting with the players and talk it over. But it just fucks up the, the, the competition itself. Mm -hmm. And that's why in this situation never ever ever step in as judges um which makes it by the way to give some accountability because it is hard to be a judge avilo shouldn't just talk into the chat is this a draw um and that's why actually in korean leagues it used to be much more heavy-handed but if you said anything unofficially mm -hmm. you were just immediately penalized because it's about the game it's about the integrity of the game and it's you know it, it, what's kind of funny is avilo tried something this kind of goes back to that weird thing like um, I can't even remember the exact circumstances, but there's a lot of drama around Scarlet because she kind of played the system and, and came out like she got a regame on a match she lost because of a weird bracket thing or something like that. Uh, but this is like a velo like you can hold him accountable, but he technically didn't break any rules asking for a draw. And then he got this mega favorable thing, which just sucks. But it ends up yeah. being the league that looks bad. It's not a velo, in my opinion, or uh, the Riddler. The Riddler's a victim yeah, in this no. case. Yeah, they, for for that piece of it, I mean, Avila looks bad for other things, um, but that that part it's so skins as well as so yeah. crystal clear that you can't just declare a draw in right. a game that has rules for that. So that's that's just like wild to me that that occurred. So judges, and I'm sure the guys learned this lesson, but you just don't say anything. You absolutely can't. You have to have rules in place. The game already has a draw system set up. If a player like Avilo, who does make it hard because he says a lot of things that you you want to respond to, but you can't, you just ignore it. You let the match play, and if it if it goes on for five hours, then so be it. Now, Dan, yeah. more more happened, I guess. Yes. So let's the the uh, we just saw this this warning up there. Okay, so they play game two. It goes on for another hour. 
for a little bit over an hour, and the Riddler ends up winning that one. Uh, I was actually watching part of it at that point because <laughs> StarCraft is blowing up. Yeah. Okay, so let me just summarize this letter right here because I'm sure there's lots of people listening to this just on a podcast or something. Um, after reviewing your games last night, this is to the Riddler, and it, it's warning issued for WCS Challenger Open, or qual- open Qualifiers and A, and it's to the Riddler from a Blizzard account. Uh, after reviewing your games last night during the Open Qualifiers for WCS Challenger Season 1, we are wishing you issuing you a warning. Okay, it brings on a section of the rules, say players must compete to the best of their ability at all times. And, okay, so it's something about play nice, play fair. This expand, extends beyond over bad manner to include gameplay during official tournaments where the admins believe that a player is not actively playing to win. Okay, so, and then it goes, it, uh, there are several points that the admin team believes you are playing to prolong the game for various reasons rather than playing to win. Okay, so they're basing this on the fact that he had uh, a bunch of money in the bank but wasn't maxed out. So, yeah. this, okay, now, again, admins are good people and stuff, but this is a fuck-up. <laughs> yes. This is a huge, like, this just shows that people don't understand the game at all. Yeah. Like, it's okay to not understand the game, but why don't you ask someone that understands the game? Okay? He's sitting there. The map is cut in half. Avilo has no money. There's no reason for him to spend all his money right now. Utilizing spells to win is how you win in the late game when there's no money on a map. Mac versus Mac, Saving yeah. Saving money to do things like repair or switch into units when you realize that these are the units that will actually beat you the game. This is actually the correct way to play in this position. So now the Riddler has a warning for playing correctly because yeah. there's all this drama. I'm sure that the fact that everyone's posting about it on Reddit and stuff had some influence. People are probably harassing these admins or something, but like, this is crazy. He shouldn't have a warning. Well, you just went and pure. You don't want to fight me on this one. No, I mean, you just went pure logical on it. Like, I can't even get there because what stops me immediately is just like the sanctity of gaming in general. Uh, you take it to another game. So, like in in a in a game like Overwatch, if there's a guy who's like his thing is he goes Genji and he's like I'll only throw projectiles. That's all I'll do. And then someone's like, so pow, warning! The sword attack is the best way to do it. That's actually how you win the game, and that's how you help your team the most. You got to stop throwing Chinese stars. Or you're out of here. Like you can't actually do that. If someone makes it some some distance into a series or into a competition, and like in StarCraft, it could be a thing where you do try to prolong it because you think your opponent could become mentally unhinged or you think you're better in the late game or you're like, I've done Raven versus Raven against this guy. I micro them better. You cannot get into the psyche of a player and be like, actually, we think you're just trying to prolong the game forever. Like, and you you just can't do that. Like, no, the, you, you just can't even begin to enter that argument unless a player like tweets lol i'm going to try and crush this tournament and delay everything so that people will be really mad then you go wham we got evidence that this guy's being a dick now i'm gonna punish him you cannot look at mech versus mech and be like i think this guy's not really trying yeah can't do that the fact that the fact that they make this ruling you're you're just so completely right like the fact that they make the ruling because he has money in the bank maxed out in a situation where he's not being attacked and he doesn't need to max out max out would be the stupidest fucking thing you could do why would he max out here? Yeah. He has money. He can do things like repair and like when they do some more damage to each other, figure out what he actually needs to buy with his tiny limited resources left. Yeah. You know, you look at it, you're like, wow, like 5K, 3K, let's call it, right? And it's like, well, that's a ton of money and you could be maxed out and then you could finish it. And it's like, this is why you are not playing in this tournament because you don't know anything about StarCraft. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's tough. I, and- he played correctly. And he has a warning, and it's crazy. And they should take the warning away. This is it's wrong that he has a warning. Agreed. Uh, there was another warning issue. Were you aware of that one, Artosis? Oh, I don't think I was actually. Please, it was a, please it was a multi-warning. So he was given the warning for what we just discussed, but then Avila was actually warned as well. Uh, and it actually says it right there in that tweet that Cobra so lovingly has there. It says Avila will receive a match loss in his next official WCS tournament for abuse of chat. Um, and then okay. he goes on to talk about BMNS, which is apparently the name of a guy that was literally hacking in this qualifier. 
And okay. Dan, this story is so good. It's all over. It's it's on Reddit. Uh, Cobra, if you don't have a thread, don't worry about it. And Cole Terrence in the in the thread, he was actually the guy commentating this whole thing, or not the thread, the chat. Excuse me. So what's up? But literally, this is this was real. This is. I don't usually, you know, I have this thing where if in the morning, I don't know if you did. Actually, I think you're a laugh out louder, laugh out louder. Uh, I don't usually laugh out loud, like if if I'm by myself, because you know I know yeah. something's funny, whatever. I I, I roll, I I raffle mayo on this. Like I, I open this thread, and the guy's like, "No, my friend doesn't hack. This team's really legitimate. We know him." And then and then it crosses out the whole paragraph, and it just has edited in. He hacks. And then I scroll down, and he actually point blank asked the guy, he's like, dude, these guys are calling you a hacker. What the fuck, man? And it was on Discord, and he goes, oh, yeah, I hack. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he just says it. And the team kicks oh. him out, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I hacked XD or whatever. Um, yeah. Hacking's super rare, guys, by the way. It actually is. I'm not even being facetious. It's it's harder to do in StarCraft Two right now. Yeah. There's less people doing it. They're not making as many hacks. But if you get out there, and you really want to hack, you can... And this guy did, and he was caught, and I guess to his credit, when he was asked about it, he was like, yeah, I hack. So he's banned. Yeah. That's gone. But Avilo, and this is where it gets a little bit murky, too, and I, I want to hear your thoughts on this, Dan. Avilo said a ton of really, you know, he was Avilo. He, he was, I, I don't need to yeah. get into the details. He said a bunch of stuff. He accused a lot of people of hacking, including the Riddler. Uh, then mm -hmm. he took to Twitter saying the Riddler was having someone else play on his account, like all these accusations over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Um, what makes it a little bit weird is he was not necessarily wrong about BMNS. I don't think he, maybe he made the accusation or not, but he calls a lot of people hackers. So that's what this warning essentially was, was, hey man, you keep doing this, you, your well, next match is a loss. Yeah. Well, if you shoot a shotgun into the ocean long enough, you'll hit a fish. So I, I guess he nailed. No, I just made that up. I like, like it though. You just started something. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, I mean, okay, so the hacker band, okay, yeah, he's a hacker, and this is, like, serious nowadays. Uh, it's funny, because yeah. people would hack in StarCraft 1, and a month later, we forgive them, <laughs> but this is StarCraft 2. There's serious he's money, there's forever. a serious pro scene, band, okay, get out of here. He admitted it and stuff, I guess that's cool, <laughs> like, that he's, he's just like, all right, um, but I mean, okay, so the, I guess the real question is uh, the Avilo, like, manner versus, um, you know, being being banned. Uh, or, well, he's not banned, right? He loses his next match. A match loss his next official WCS tournament yeah. for abuse of chat. So whatever he signs up for, loss. So he should just sign up for the next thing no matter what it is. He has um, to to get it out of the way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't even matter. Just, like, do it, like... Does that mean if he signs up for the open bracket in Austin, he auto gets a loss? And if so, does he have to show up to the tournament? <laughs> I'm just wondering if there's like a sneaky way around this. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I didn't dive that deep into it, but it does beg the a very interesting question. I doubt he flies over to Austin for the open bracket and is handed like a little, mm. a little envelope that says, thank you for showing up, but you lost. Um, yeah. It might be double limit. I don't know. What, so, well, what do you what do you think? Is this is this a good punishment for this? Yeah, I, I think my uh, my full scope answer is um, Avilo gonna Avilo. So I, I'm not. I would never say like he should be banned from the community. Nope, nothing like that. I think he's actually yeah. he's a he's a you know he's obviously a very mm -hmm. um, energetic and kind of angry ranty guy. But he streams to a large audience. He does care a shit ton. Even if he tries and tells you he doesn't, he absolutely does. Mm -hmm. And here's the funny thing. My anecdotal thing for this, and we'll get into subject pretty soon but in nation wars uh his name was mentioned as like you know he, he he wanted to run so he puts his name in and then people like made threads saying absolutely he should never be allowed you cannot vote for him it was kind of a weird um like art imitates life moment where you know negative pr is still pr so he won yeah he got voted in no question and a large yeah. part of that was because so many people were trolling, of course, and voting for him because they thought it'd be funny to get him in there, but also because so many people were making such a big deal about not wanting it. So anyways, this is yeah. a long-winded way of saying Avilo is going to constantly keep trying to qualify for these things, and kind of part of his shtick is in that situation, he's going to say dumb shit because that's what mm -hmm. gets him attention. That's what kind of gives him notoriety. He's not winning these qualifiers. He's not on a professional team. He's a good player by the standard of, you know... um, most people but not a good player in pro standards 
but mm-hmm. we know about him we talk about him and he gets uh notoriety because of situations like this so for him this is a slap on the wrist sure next time he's at a wcs do you think he's not going to start yelling at people absolutely not he will keep doing mm-hmm. it until we get to yeah. i don't know what the strike system is but if there's like a third one and you're banned for life i bet that's the one where he stops probably yelling at people and yeah. you can you can make the choice for yourself whether or not you like that or not it's just a he's he is the heel of starcraft 2 that's part of what goes on in this place yeah, it's true. Uh, he, I mean, he definitely adds some excitement. You can see how many threads get made about him weekly on StarCraft Reddit, you know. Um, he's just, uh, people are always happy to talk about him, and, yeah. he, you know, he provides all this this different drama. So there's definitely, like, and I, the thing is, he has a popular stream. A lot of people like to watch yep, him. I watch A him. lot of people sub to him and all this stuff. And, yep. uh, you know, I've definitely seen some highlight clips that I thought were quite funny from his channel and stuff. So, like, mm-hmm. I mean... If that's the rules, then yeah, he gets a he gets a match loss. I don't really have any problem with it. The one thing I guess that pops into my mind is if he had acted like this in Overwatch League, what would have happened to him? Because I'm seeing all the crazy stuff that like they're being really tight with that. Like, are they being lenient with Avilo, or is this tough on Avilo? Which do you think? I think the crime fits the punishment. Um, I don't. I, I mean. It is ridiculous to call everyone a hacker. I, I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. But but he's not when you know when he loses in a WCS match. Uh, I'm sure he said something kind of bad. But for the most part, it's not really. It's it's more just like ah, Protoss sucks and this is so stupid and what a dumb game. All dumb stuff that I personally really don't like. Obviously, but he's got every right to say it. Um, it's only been punished and stepped over the line when he starts accusing people of hacking and and the punishment fits the crime. I mean, in Overwatch League, people are sending dick pics and soliciting 14 year old girls as 21 year old guys so i i think it's a, a little bit different and uh <laughs> if they only got temporary ban that'd be really really bad so uh i do want to pull one comment from the chat uh muck two or muck who was saying you're a part of the problem uh, you 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 misunderstand and this is actually a nice precedent for our show we're going to talk about all the subjects but also i actually don't think a velo is a problem i think people's reaction to it or how it's treated or understood is the problem. Um, if you think you can go anywhere in life and avoid people that are being irate, angry, or, you know, negative, oof, oof. Uh, if you do find the place, let me know. It's probably somewhere in Australia. Um, <laughs> but I'll just tell you, like, uh, Velo's a part of this community. He's a guy that contributes yeah. a hell of a lot. It might not be the kind of way you like it. And if not, then don't watch. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I personally don't really watch him, but whatever. And I think that one thing, Jeff, that we should definitely make sure of is that we aren't afraid to talk about anything on the show as well. Yep. I think that's kind of a cool thing because it's just our thing that we can we can talk about these subjects. We're not part of the problem, actually. Agreed. Humans should be able to talk about whatever they want. Free speech is cool. Free so. speech is cool. And I think that's that's what, and Dan, you touched on it too, but I, I like that about us. You and I, uh, I think you guys probably know that, know us for this too, but we'll, we'll be honest to almost a fault, I think. Uh, so... Yeah. Maybe we'll get in some trouble. Maybe I'll get my wrist my, my wrist slapped by Blizzard a few times, but I do want to bring the honest... We want to bring the honest truth as much as we can to you guys and uh, discuss it because I think it's really healthy for everybody. Um, but that kind of wraps that up. So that was there was some drama there. I think uh, we touched on that subject really well. Uh, like any subject, if you guys have anything to say, tweet at us, let us know, post in the thread on Team Liquid. Um, yeah. We're going to do a thing at the end where we, we, touch, we, we talk with you guys in the chat and ask Q&A, but... Uh, these subjects are interesting and I want to hear what you guys think. So moving on next yeah. subject, we have nation wars is, uh, has been going on and, uh, we just kind of want to touch on this and talk a little bit about it. nothing too terribly specific unless Dan has something. Um, but I just want to say it's a really cool event. I think it's awesome mm. that, uh, O gaming has been doing this for a few years. I know that blizzard backed them up and really supported this on it, but Dan, what would, would have been your thoughts? I mean, O gaming's amazing and, Love all those guys. Love Nation Wars. Uh, you know, Nation Wars were a big part in StarCraft One, so it definitely holds yeah. a place in my heart. Uh, I guess that the two main things to talk about, because I mean, everyone's watching. Uh, obviously, the Finland versus Germany was pretty yep. sick and badass. Uh, it, but kind of more on this this way that we've been talking so far this show, I'm kind of having fun with it. But like, for instance, Avilo being there, right? Uh, it, I guess the two subjects are like the voting system and how that yeah. works and if there should be rules or should not be rules. And then also uh, the fact that you revive someone yep. for a nation, right? So you can have, for instance, Finland going super deep off of Serral or something like that. So those are kind of the two interesting ones. I think we should start with the 
yeah. the voting one, uh, because again, it, it, it does bring up a veal that we were already kind of talking about. Like, uh, remember last year, Nathanius. there was uh, Nathanius. Yep. Um, and this is, it's an interesting thing, right? Because it's, it's a popularity con and a lot of the top players are very popular and people want to see them play. So they definitely get voted in, but there are some other players that it's, it's more of, uh, just like, oh, you're, you're famous, right? Like everyone wants to see Nathanius he gets voted in that year. He actually got a lot of shit for it that I thought was undeserved, completely Absolutely. undeserved. Um, but there's, there's an interesting other point. Cause I think he probably share a similar view on yep. this that it's just fine because it's like let this is a fun event like let let people vote in who they want to watch play um and that includes avila and that includes Nathanius last year but uh a specific man very close to my heart and yours rotterdam i had a long talk with him about this i believe in katavice so i guess you weren't there but yeah because he decided not to enter right and roddy's really good at starcraft too but the thing is, there's three Dutch people better than him, and there's only three spots. So there's Harston, Euthermal, and Optimus. And Roddy might be the fourth best or the fifth best Dutch guy. And so he's like, no, I'm not going to enter. And I'm like, Roddy, people would love to see you play. I would yeah. I would tune into every Roddy match, man. And, and win just matches, like, yeah. Yeah, and he'd win games, and you know, he, he wouldn't be a dead weight on the team or anything like that. But he's – and the thing is, I totally respect this is – he wants Netherlands to do the best it possibly can. And he recognizes he is not one of the top three players. So he doesn't want to play because he just wants his country to do well. And I, I mean, it's a, a, I respect that and all, but wouldn't, would the tournament be better with Roddy? I think it would like if Roddy's playing in that. Yeah. Am I wrong here? No, I think it's interesting. I think, um, I think it's how you talk about this is the interesting framing for this because both have merit. I, 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 I think a team is more interesting and exciting, and I too would watch a lot more if Roddy was a part of that squad. Um, mm -hmm. I watched the Nathanius uh, matches because of the intrigue of that. Yeah. He was people were really pulling for him to get that good game against these top tier pros or to do really well. Um, but like you said, and and this needs to be put out there. Nate for a while was really turned off to even streaming ladder mm -hmm. and 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 putting himself out there because of how much shit he got for that. Now, yeah. you have to have thick skin, and it's not like people are at his doorstep like, Nathaniel, get outside, or I'm going to fight you. There's nothing that bad. But when people are getting at you from different angles, and you, you get it anyways because you're an online personality, it gets to be too much. So my take on this is I think it's an identity crisis that the league kind of needs to come out and just be like, look, the voting system is who you want. It's not a top tier meant to be the best players. It's meant to be whoever the hell you want, which I think mm -hmm. it kind of naturally defaults to when it just is um, ran the way it is. But I would like, um, because I believe it ends up becoming exactly like Dan just said, it's not nation wars. It's a guy from a nation wars. So like Cyril is carrying his team. Neve mm -hmm. is carrying team America. Harstam is carrying the Dutch team with, with some help. Um, it does create cool storylines where like, I believe the uh, what team was it? it was Poland that lost despite having several good players like some of these results are kind of cool but like uh you know Mexico has become a lot better because it's not just special um so there is cool storylines in this tournament it's still fantastic but I wish it was like four or five guys and there was like a rule like one of them is called the mascot and they have to play a limited uh at least like sure. three matches something where it gets to be a little bit more of a clear idea of what we're getting out of this and I also understand why you wouldn't do that because at the end they invite these rosters out, by the way. They fly them out to France. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, if it's mm -hmm. a team of five or four people, that gets to be very expensive. Um, sometimes one guy can't make it, and that kind of sinks the, the scheduling for the whole thing. So there are reasons behind the scene why this is not the case. I think Dan and I are wish listing for next year. I want a Nathanius on the North American team. Mm -hmm. I want Rotterdam on that on that Dutch team, because I think you're right. I think he literally is the fourth best guy in that country. And I would watch all their matches, and I think it would be better for the event. Yeah, I think so. And uh, we have so much serious space stuff in StarCraft, right? StarCraft 2 is all about esports. It's all about having the best players all the time. There's so many tournaments everywhere, right? There's like great base trade stuff, even. There's the Challenger League. There's the actual WCS events, there's ESL, right? There's just all the top players are getting to play absolutely everywhere. We don't actually have a lot of really great kind of fun side stuff. I mean, we have a little bit here and there. Obviously, yeah. it's 20 stuff, but it's going to be 20 more years before we have that again. Um, SC40. You know, it, 
Yeah. Hey, but I mean, I like your idea, like some sort of compromise. Maybe there's like a mascot match and those two have to play each other at the beginning or Ooh, something. Right. Cool. And then yeah. like whoever wins gets to play a pro next or, I mean, that could be cool and fun because at the same time I look at this, right. And USA could have done better than it did with a better team. But for me, for instance, I really like M. Canning. I think that he's hilarious. He's he's a good skill, too. Is he top three USA? Probably not quite top three, but he's very good, right? So yep. I, it, it's nice to watch his matches on there. Obviously, Avila has a lot of fans trying to watch him and stuff. But right there you have it. Like, some of the USA guys have bigger uh, personalities overall, so they get voted in more likely. So USA does more poorly than the countries that are trying to be serious face about it, where none of the personalities are entering in, right? Like, Loco has a bunch of fans. He could have entered in. Maybe he would have been voted into the, the Dutch team. But I don't know. It, the thing is, I, I respect the decision of someone like Roddy, but at the same time, I feel like for me personally, that could have made the event more fun to watch. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that there's a wide range of opinions. No one's really wrong on anything here. Except for the people who are giving shit to someone like Nathanius uh, last year. Yeah. Obviously, that's last year. I'm sorry if I'm opening up those wounds for you, Nate, but that it, it was just so BS. And I remember I was like watching like all of his games, basically. You know, it's it's just kind of makes it fun to see some of these guys compete in an actual you know competitive thing. Absolutely agreed. And and you know that's just our take on it. But I do want to say. It's amazingly well received. I think they're doing a great job. I love the desk, the atmosphere they have. They have a fantastic group of people doing it. Funk mm -hmm. has been commentating the hell out of it. He's actually a sick hype commentator, um, yeah. which is crazy because he's like a very mediocre observer. So if, like for him to turn out to be a pretty good commentator is just crazy. I know. Huh? Jeez. <laughs> he's going to be running DreamHack before you know it. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> he'll, he'll take over. Like the Adibus, he has like a little flame that he pulls out. And he's like, it's, it's yours now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, we're just kidding. Of course they're doing great. And zombie grub. <laughs> cool to see her there too. Like there's been a, a nice, like ascension of zombie grub. She's been a, a fantastic online commentator, but this, mm -hmm. uh, I would say about a year ago, she made the push to start doing bigger events and, and, uh, was given the shot and she delivered. It's great. Yeah. I love yeah. the diversity of Starcraft. There's a little bit of that. Yeah, It's quite nice. And, uh, it's always, it's always just so wonderful to just have nation wars going on anyways, to, to have a little glimpse of this thing that I remember very fondly and seeing which country can do better. But um, I think that I think what you said before is is a good idea. Maybe coming out with an actual identity, whether they want it to be serious face, yeah. right? Or like they only put the top five ladder guys from each country into the poll or something, or anyone can sign up and kind of it would be nice to have O Gaming maybe come out, say specifically how they want this done. Yep. Uh, and what they think is best for it so that things like because again it's like the you know usa is weaker than it needs to be but it's also more fun to watch than the other teams so i think yeah, in the, yeah. and just to wrap it up guys in the spirit of um this show and us sharing oversharing even i do want to <laughs> say so for you guys to just put this little bit of flavor in there for you guys the o gaming crew is notorious in esports for copious amounts of drinking um, and then they are European, so there's been a lot of fornicating as well. So just kind of just put that in the back <laughs> of your mind. They're a little bit loose over there uh, in the dirty France and let that flavor. Mm. So when you see, because some of my favorite moments in StarCraft in, in, in esports history are when the chat and the community doesn't quite know what's going on, but they speculate. There was one time Idra had to commentate a um, EG League match and he had this really severe black eye. And I think he told people like he fell over or whatever. Um, but what I love about esports is people are like, oh man, God, Greg's so passionate. Like he, he fell out of bed to wake up so early to get out here and commentate this thing. He's just such a good guy. <laughs> he actually uh, was shrooming <laughs> in in uh, pre pre home story cup. He he exper he experimented with some drugs. And guys, it's legal over there, so it's totally fine to talk about this. Um, and he apparently had such a terrible allergic reaction to it. He sneezed so hard and so r rapidly that he popped and blew blood vessels in his eye socket, like in his wow. eyeball. It was, bl it was blood red in his eye socket because he had such a bad reaction to it. Um, and people were like, God, look at Greg. He's just, he's out there. He's so tired. He's beat up and he's just still commentating. Nope. He's contractually ob obligated to <laughs> withstand his injuries <laughs> and keep going. Anyway, so that's just a, a little bit of a flavor out there. Is there a story about Apollo having 
some pretty risque nights in France? Yeah. Yeah, there are, but who who aren't there stories like that from? You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you for that, Jeff. One more thing on Nation Wars, I don't yeah. know. Uh, the fact that you can revive a player. Is this a good thing, a bad thing? What do you think about that? It's hard. Um, I think with, with the small roster, I understand why. It's because otherwise a match could be in danger of lasting like 25 minutes or whatever. I yeah. think competition wise i don't like it because it, it inevitably becomes 100 percent knee revived and sarah revived and innovation revived and special revived like it's the exact same one guy uh, i think that'd yeah. be an interesting stat that nobody wants to see on the side of nation wars of like how much um revived diversity has there been my argument would be it's maybe happened on like the korean team and probably nothing else ever maybe mexico because cham and, and special <laughs> are very close in that way but I would tell you that I, I guess the stat is something in the ballpark of 100 to 90 percent. It's the same guy every time. And that's a, that's an indication that eh, is that fun? Is it cool to do that? Because they're not even a final boss anymore. It's like a Final Fantasy final boss where they're like, you've defeated me in my human form. Now I'm in a squid monster form. And you're like, oh, cool. Yeah. He's back. Um, yeah. And then the other team has a revive too. And it's the same guy again. So it ends up being, I don't know, kind of weird. But. That's Nation Wars. You guys should check it out. As the graphics showed yeah. earlier, they're going to have their offline finals uh, April 21, I believe it is. So make sure and tune in for that. Um, and we'll be talking about that in uh, the, well, the one week before that, I guess, week to come. Next topic, we got two more for you guys, and then we're going to open up to that Q&A real quick. Um, and this topic's a little bit, uh, it's a hard one because this is, this is more of a rant and complaint from Dan and I. Um, this show is a StarCraft show. We want to talk about StarCraft 2, and we want to talk about StarCraft Remastered. Um, but one of the topics that we would we would tell you right now, and we're going to start off the show this way, and hopefully evolve beyond it, and, and there is things to talk about, but this topic is called... There's not that much to talk about, Dan. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. No, so... There's no real... Uh, there's no events announced. Uh, there's no show matches really... Go I mean, there are... And this is my favorite part, too, is every time I'm like, there's not that much StarCraft Remastered going on, someone's like, now hold on! Okay? Jane Dawson is doing a bi-monthly $10 show match on their... Like, no, 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 no. What we're talking about is when StarCraft Remastered came out, I was hoping for a TSL. I was hoping for a <laughs> Blizzard announced event, which they say is coming, so hopefully there is one. I was hoping for something to happen where I could tune into Team Liquid every day and not see Korean streaming and then a couple of guys streaming to 45 people, but rather tournaments and, and robust and cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is a kind of a weird thing and something that really frustrates me about esports. Um, how many years has it been now that every new game that comes out Everyone jumps on it. It's an eSport. Every league picks it up. Everyone gives it a because everyone's looking, you know, for that diamond in the rough that's going to be this huge game, you know, the next League of Legends or Counter-Strike or whatever the hell it is, right? Mm -hmm. Every game that comes out, this happens, and there's just tons of tournaments and tons of tournaments and tons of tournaments. And this didn't happen with, with StarCraft Remastered, which is funny because... Some of these games, that, and here's the thing, for instance, Rocket League is actually pretty darn big, and people really like it, and it seems like it's going to be a successful eSport, right? Yeah. It's cars hitting soccer balls, man. And they're, <laughs> like, and I mean, that's, it's cool. I'm not hating on Rocket League. Yeah. I, I know, and it looks like if I like soccer or cars, I probably would really like the game. Um, yeah. But, like... It, it's, it's worse than that, what, though, Dan. What? It's worse yeah. than that, because, like, uh, obviously, we're going to pat our own backs here, but the events that we did had good numbers, guys. And, and to go yes. back to what we were talking about earlier, yes. they were advertised horrifically. They were kind of last yes. minute. Um, we did not have all the best players. We did not have uh, all the biggest personalities. We had some of them. And still, the channel was at 30, 35,000. People were sitting there and watching StarCraft Remastered for eight hours. And I think yes. there's this weird fear where people are like, it's an old game, so all the audience is going to be like, what is this? archaic game being but none of that people were like oh i fucking love this i remember it from high school oh my god i'm so glad they're doing this mm -hmm. so do i yeah. think I, and that's the part that boggles my mind dan it'd be one thing if we did those events and there was like 500 people watching and it sucked yes then yes. i'd be like okay 
it's moved on it, it apparently is not what it needs to be okay i get it and then the people that have been following it and watching can can continue to love it but i was hoping for and there still is hope guys it's just that we're at that point where i'm gonna start ranting and i'm gonna start poking uh people with sticks because and i'm gonna come out and say it i do hold blizzard responsible um there is there's a, a giant question mark even in their camp every time we talk to them they're like uh, even with this show, one of the one of the road bumps we hit is we're like, we want to talk about StarCraft every week. And they're like, is there enough StarCraft to talk about every week? And I was like, ah, that's your own game. Ah! <laughs> like, I was like, ah! but uh, trust me, we can talk about StarCraft every week. Yeah, this is not an issue. In fact, if I was a more. neighbor, you would have to change or something because yeah. I would be like, hey, Jeff, hey, do you want to and it would be upset some? for sure. <laughs> Um, but, uh, and, and I one before you go, Dan, one, one, real quick, because people in the chat are like, "What about SSL? What about ASL? What about these things?" Guys, I'm not saying there's no brood war. Listen, don't take this and, and hear me saying there is no brood war. Why isn't there no brood war? I'm saying I wish there was more, and I hope nobody in the chat could possibly think there's an argument against that. Hmm. So, okay, um, like a couple things, right? There, uh, again, the fact that. Every game that comes out, it feels like if there's any way to play it against another human, right? We've seen esports tournaments pop up. The fact that we're not getting any, and back to what you said, like the, if you look at the views that we've had on the events that we've done, now the one thing that I do have to say is you have to have a channel that's developed, right? This is like a weird yeah. thing that I think Twitch hadn't necessarily planned on, but regular social media doesn't work that well anymore. Facebook kind of sucks nowadays and like Twitter isn't as popular as it once was, right? So it's hard to get people to go to a stream that's not as popular. Like for instance, Zotac did a great job putting on a really nice tournament. That was actually a really good tournament, but their Twitch channel wasn't that big and we just didn't get the views. But it was the same thing as the other events. But as soon as you put us on the StarCraft channel, you put us on, you know, the Day9 TV channel, stuff like that, bam, the views the views go crazy. And I think that if you compare, now I don't have the stats on this, but from, from my knowledge, which is more than all the guys in the chat, uh, so you don't need to necessarily question too much. Um, if you look at the budget for these events that we've had StarCraft Remastered at, the budget to views, and you compare that to anything in StarCraft 2, I think that it's done better. Yeah. I don't know. Someone can Someone can do the math and get back to me. It's actually crazily um, comparable, at least. And I do know, to play devil's advocate a little bit, I do know part of the argument, I think the reason why, even as you saw with Holiday Bash and with the StarCraft 20 event, uh, it does make more sense financially for Blizzard to push StarCraft 2 versus StarCraft, because that's the game they're more likely yes. to get new players to, to, to rope in lifelong people, as opposed to with StarCraft Remastered. The problem I have with that, to argue with myself right now, which is it's literally what's happening in real time, uh, mm -hmm. is that is true, but I think you can actually still get a different audience, which is economically viable and beneficial. Like the people that would be really interested and stoked and awesome and tuning in to a StarCraft remastered event are not necessarily an exact crossover of the people that watch StarCraft uh, 2. Like uh, our WCS audience and our StarCraft remastered audience are different people. And if you can monetize and, and advertise and, and appease a different audience with your game, for like Dan said, less effort and less money, you should fucking do that. You should really do that. Yeah, I, I mean, I certainly think so. Uh, it, it, it's really surprising me that nothing has occurred. Nothing. Like, I swear to God, if, there, if DreamHack wants to announce an official StarCraft 1 tournament, with a few thousand dollar prize pool, I will fly there. I will play in it, yeah. I will commentate it, I will do everything. Same here. Like, yeah. But no one is doing this. Yeah. And that's There's just that goes nobody. Back. So you talked about this <laughs> like... with, the, with the land thing. That to me is because esports is still a little bit the Wild West where like any money you have, you don't really do an appeasement thing or you don't do a like, I think this will be well received thing. I think you have to, at least this is the belief, you have to invest it into what, you know, what are our investors talking about? They're talking about Fortnite. They're talking mm -hmm. about PUBG. If I'm not doing one of those things, where's that money going? Well, then we're taking a risk on the new thing that's like that, that's going to possibly blow up. Because like the 19th thing is, uh, it'd be kind of fun to run a StarCraft Remastered event. I, I, and that's, 
I say that guy is not because I'm like proud or that I think that that's true, but I believe that to be the mentality. I think that's the business mindset in esports. Yeah, it, business mindset in esports, I think, is kind of a a bit of a problem. Um, like, okay, it, it seems like all the games are being made everywhere to make games that are worth like a billion dollars, right? And have loot boxes or card packs or gun skins or whatever. Um, a lot of games are very team-based that are being made and you can kind of blame other people when you lose. They aren't as high skill cap as they used to be. I mean, I dare anyone to try to <laughs> counter anything I'm saying here. This is kind of the way everything's going and everything seems to be pushed so much by uh, money and in turn obviously views because you want high viewerships you get more people playing you get more people spending money things like this uh and the thing is like i mean this has been going on for a long time but can this continue forever can we just always be making games easier and better at sucking money out of people uh like the thing is you look at it starcraft brood war started esports straight up like professional professional esports like counter-strike was around tournaments and stuff right so i don't want to uh, not give you know credit where it's due um but like it, it, starcraft is is such a big deal with that and if you look at the actual skill caps of these games how hard these games are to play uh what players can show off that's super impressive and stuff it, oh, i know it, starcraft 1 and starcraft 2 it's incomparable how much how much harder and better these games are and the fact that starcraft 1 like this is the most mechanically demanding game that there is and it's complex as hell and it's amazing for many many different reasons and like if everything is always going to be like well we need to make the most money and this isn't this isn't just on blizzard this is on like everyone it's like shouldn't eventually humans go back to wanting to make a quality show that's like you know it's like well you know this isn't the billion dollar idea perhaps or you know what maybe it ends up being it because people want to be good at games again and want to enjoy the hardest games again but like it, it just seems to me that this way that things are going can't continue forever and eventually we should have a return you know like people are starting to not use facebook anymore right why is this it's a time suck yeah they steal your information or whatever but like it's kind of like this same thing. People are starting to figure out that, like, oh shit, we're looking at our phones too much, right? Like, this is this is like a general movement. People are starting to eat kale. They're like, oh damn, I can't just eat burgers all the time. Like, there's there should be a return to quality eventually. Uh, you know, and within esports as well, I would say. Like, and this is this is a great game to to have for it. And I don't know, man. It's just. It's crazy to me that nobody is even trying to do anything with it. It's it's uh, it's heartbreaking. If it's we had even one tournament, the entire scene would be lit up. And the thing is, there's great things within the scene. Okay, BSL, fantastic. The have at shoes and all these little tournaments and stuff. You guys are doing a great job keeping it together for everybody. Uh, but I just wish an esports. Uh, company someone would actually look at it and be like this is the founder of esports we might be able to do something with the highest skill cap mechanical game ever made yeah. with the longest history it's like it has a lot of things going for it i don't know it, it won't it, happen but imagine like a, a home story <laughs> cup of just starcraft brood war that'd be that's that land thing you're talking about that'd be amazing god um, it would be so good <laughs> so i do want to clean up a couple things here and I, this is actually like repeating it but i know that otherwise what I'm doing, Dan, is I'm scalping out like three pages of hate on Team Liquid, so bear with me. Yeah. But like, there are Brood War events, guys. I know that. The chat was yep. filling up. Yes, please hear us. We're specifically saying we wish it was at bigger events and bigger fish were taking it on and getting excited about and putting on events. Um, we're not trying to hate or say that there's nothing going on. You guys, like Dan just said, are doing a great job. Um, we're wishing there was more. Um, so that being said, moving forward, we're always going to be committed to reporting and talking about starcraft remastered so those ssls or the the events that they're that are going on um we will talk about that we'll talk about matches dan's been laddering it a lot i'm going to start joining him and get back into that swing as well so we'll talk about our experience and there will be a starcraft remastered presence on the show um and i put uh tim on the spot at the uh starcraft 20 event and asked him point blank on camera with 
like 40,000 people watching. Uh, and he said that he can't promise anything, obviously. That's not his job to do that. But he said that Blizzard plans on doing something with StarCraft Remastered uh, in the in the area of some kind of tournament. So that'll be exciting. Uh, I think what Dan and I would always say is we would hope that would, that kind of thing would get announced and put out there earlier so people can start practicing, mm-hmm. getting excited. And like, if they're like, mm-hmm. Jeff, Dan, you guys got to fly yourself to the Bahamas to play in this tournament. Guess what? Done. I'm buying a fucking ticket. Yeah. We'll go yes. do that. I I literally promise if that if there is an event in BlizzCon or my brother's wedding or something like that, and it's a legit event, I will be there. I'll play. I'll commentate. I'll do anything. Like I I want I want this game to get its 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 moment again because it never really got it before for a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, it, back in the day, it was reasons like it wasn't the newest RTS, so it didn't sell the graphic cards, which were the sponsors for everything. Right. And so yeah. Warcraft 3 got all the events and Brood War got nothing. And it was like sad because it was, you know, there's 20 War 3 pros and there's like a million StarCraft guys. Uh, one one argument, I do want to bring up this one argument yeah. that I get told every time for my whole life. Like for 20 years now, I've been hearing the same going. type of shit. Everyone tells me non Koreans don't like this game, don't want to watch this game. Nick and I lobbied at Afrika TV. It used to be GOM TV, right? Uh, we lobbied for years, for so long, to be able to cast in English some StarCraft 1. This was before a remaster was ever announced or anything. Yeah, of course. We were lobbying for it. And they kept telling us, non-Koreans don't, don't watch this. Non-Koreans don't watch this. I moved to Korea in 2008 to do StarCraft 1 stuff. StarCraft 2 hadn't been announced. Right? I don't think it was announced. Maybe it was no, announced at that point. I don't, I don't think so. But anyways, I, I moved over there. And the thing is, the biggest StarCraft site in the world by miles was TeamLiquid.net. It was much bigger than all the Korean sites. Way more views. Uh, you know, it, it just, that's a fact. I know that as a fact. That's the way it was back yeah. then, even in the prime of Brood War. And, okay, so like, for instance, we lobbied and lobbied and lobbied at Afrika to be able to do StarCraft 1. And we kept getting told, no one will watch it. We're like, we promise they will. Guess how many viewers we got the very first time we caught on Twitch? 17,000 concurrent viewers. Don't tell me people will watch this stuff. Yeah, at that hour of the day, 17,000. And the thing is, like, you know, this this is one of the little caveats is that things have to be on popular channels on Twitch because no one watches like un- unseen channels yet, it seems. But um, yeah, it, don't tell me that foreigners don't like it. I think that absolutely non-Korean pl- people can enjoy this game quite a bit. Yeah. Um, no, it's let us explain it to them and show and show off the skills of these players. And I don't know. I could soapbox about this for a long time. Passionate about both StarCrafts. And I love where StarCraft 2 is at. I'm having a great time with it, playing it daily. It's a fun game. It's got tons of tournaments. It's just I look at StarCraft 1, I'm like, this is an equally great game with even more history and stuff. Can we do something? And it seems like the entire esports world says, no, Artosin, we can't do anything with that. No, and that's the crazy part, too, is like, not to keep going too full circle about this, but like, when we did these events, um, I, I don't know, maybe there was a le- legitimate fear that watching such an old game would be uninteresting to people but our audience it didn't like it didn't go five thousand, then down to two when people were like oh they're playing that garbage game i'm out of here it, it, it stayed and kept going higher and higher and and the comments in the matches and stuff were just people really enjoying it be like man i can always watch brood war and everyone would say the same thing which is really funny they'd be like i suck at this game but i really like watching people play it uh hmm. and it's like it's there anyways that's our soapbox um hopefully someone out there listening because we're gonna we're not gonna shut up about it by the way we're going to keep know. saying that. We and, never shut up. Well, that's just true, I guess. Um, so we'll, we'll cover more Brood War in the future. Uh, it won't just be whining. Um, and like I said, we're going to be playing. Dan's actually looking to start hosting a practice night with a lot of our, right. our big friends. And that'll be streamed on his channel. Uh, you'll get to hear us talking in, in Discord and hanging out. So some of the people like Nyokin and uh, G5, Machine, myself, you. Uh, LZ Gamer, I think, Gamer. We had as many as the old guys back together. I know we did it once. Damn, that was like the most fun ever, man. So yeah, definitely going to try to make that a very regular thing, like a weekly thing with all of us. Whenever people aren't traveling, you can do it, obviously. Yep. 
it'll be hard uh to do you know like we used to because we used to just sit in our in our homes and not have as much <laughs> responsibilities but the the, the point is yeah. you can kind of look forward to that we're going to start making that kind of content um so that wraps up uh the starcraft remaster discussion we're going to go to one more topic and then we're going to end with that q a mm-hmm. um so dan you guys have been commentating in korea do you want to just uh regale us with a little bit of what you thought with the super tournament and whatnot oh i mean the super tournament was great once again um i guess it probably shouldn't bring up that that bracket but uh you know we we had stats end up winning it it's kind of funny like We've had a lot of tournaments in the past six, eight months, something like that. Mm -hmm. And as far as Koreans go, we have really got the top tier players kind of nailed down and they just keep nailing the the top of every tournament. Like, uh, look at the actual results here, right? So stats wins, dark gets second. We have classic up there and hero up there. And then you got like Maru right below. Like these are the guys that are at the top of every tournament in the world right now. So it's kind of cool to see that happening. Super tournaments always, always a lot of fun and stuff. I guess you know people already watch the game, so we don't need to go over them no. uh, too much individually. But I don't know. It's just it, it, I kind of like it when this happens when we have like really consistent tiers of pros, and then you can sometimes see people go between them, right? And it's uh, a little bit of a different thing. I think uh, StarCraft Two audiences don't get this as much. It definitely is like a a brood war thing where people hit this tier, this class, and the story became they're pretty unstoppable. They are the best, and mm-hmm. it was celebrated. I think in StarCraft Two, it's it's um, it's definitely not demonized per se, but it is. It's more of a fifty fifty mix between people who are like, "Wow, that guy's so good," and then the other fifty of like, "His race is broken. He's an idiot. I don't like him. His games are terrible." Uh, there's like a lot of that, in particular if they're a Protoss. Um. But stats seem to kind of hit that stride where he's just kind of quietly doing that. He just beat Dark again um, and is doing well. One of the ones that I kind of thought was interesting in there, because I need to change my mindset on this, but True did okay, actually, just narrowly losing to Dark. Uh, I think of True as like, and this is, like I said, this is me needing to change my my mindset. I think of him as like a pretty cheesy kind of bad Korean uh, pro gamer. But that Mm. was like, that's like an old thing. Like he, he definitely is still cheesy, but like, his results are starting to get pretty damn good. He is a very good player. He's just so like frumpy and friendly and and nice. And then his play style is just uh, I don't know. He doesn't like destroy people with mechanics. He just wins games. So mm-hmm. it's kind of funny. But he he did great. Did well. Yeah, and he's a, a very interesting player to have in tournaments. Uh, and it, it's kind of neat that he's coming back to Korea in a lot of ways, right? He went with Sidestorm Gaming and moved over to North America for a while. Uh, and like had to drop out of a code S at that point, but he was a code S Zerg. That definitely means quite a bit. Um, obviously, he won that that first event. What was that? Montreal, I believe. Over, yeah. He like only lost like a map or two maps to Polt in the finals and killed everyone else. And uh, but then he kind of like fell off, and now he's back in Korea and actually doing quite well. So I don't know. Uh, maybe it, it seems like his skill deteriorated also getting better so i don't want to i don't want to go that far but yeah. it looks like he's you know he's definitely a very fun player to watch and it was kind of funny i don't know if you saw his actual interview uh, before his okay before his round of eight before the round of eight there was an interview right because he had beaten and it was a it was actually a pretty good series trust is uh quite underrated right now doing well um and it was a messy series because true like he brings you down in the dirt man like he's trying yeah. to get zerglings in your base he's bailing busting like he's a dirty player in a lot of ways and like during his interview his whole interview was basically him being like the casters were saying me th- i went back and watched the vods the casters were saying mean things about me all the korean netizens were really being rude i hope to show you know quality play here tonight but i'm really kind of sad <laughs> it was it was like this heartbreaking thing because it's like well all these people talking shit. It's like he's way better than you. <laughs> Whatever. He's in. He's in super tournament. Ty's not in super tournament, but True is. Right? Yeah. I don't know. It was. It was that's, a, that's a hard part about being a pro gamer. Not that mm-hmm. we need to go into that whole conversation, but it's like, I uh, I suffered a lot of losses in my StarCraft Two career in particular, and and uh, yeah. there's a weird thing where you know you shouldn't read the comments. You know you shouldn't be checking the threads, especially if you lost. 
but a lot of people do and i did for yeah. sure and i would go read it people are like ah this guy's a fucking clown he's terrible and i hate him and you, and you read that and you're just like oh like it just guts you uh mm-hmm. but i think people read it because they're still looking for that person who's like you know what i just i'm so entertained it was such a great match and you're like oh that's it that's good <laughs> it's hard to do. that's what i was looking for <laughs> so that's super tournament if you guys enjoyed it and uh liked it let us know about it um so that's gonna do it for our subjects today we're going to move into a Q&A where if you guys think there's something you want us to talk about, we'll take a few of the comments from the chat and we'll yap about it for a little bit um, while I'm waiting for you guys to catch up to that. I'm going to wrap up by saying a couple things. I know that there is a Dan's mic is cutting in and out a little bit. That could be because he's in Korea and internet or it could be my internet. I don't know. It's not something worth mentioning a whole bunch in the chat because uh, my favorite image is always like someone like I'm just like hitting a button like mute dan mute dan or like whatever um yeah we're dropping a few frames and stuff whatever we don't know. the point is we'll, like we'll get it all fixed up this we'll is the first out. time it's... we'll figure it out um or we won't it'll just be something that always happens i don't know we'll see um and then lastly as your guys questions are coming in the way we want to do this is just go ahead and like uh, at me or at dan dan's looking at the chat i'm looking at the chat we'll pull some out there and we'll talk a little bit about it uh some will get missed we're sorry we're only gonna talk about a few of these um and while you guys are doing that i no, I'll, I'll end my uh, sellout sp- spiel for the end. We'll do that. Dan, do you see anything you want to talk about in there, buddy? All right, let me let me take a look. Does Dan actually use that oh, skateboard? God, really spam- oh, I just started. Uh, well, I I got the skateboard uh, last summer, mm-hmm. and because I've been wanting to learn how to skateboard for a few years, so my wife bought it for me, and I started learning. And then it became winter, so I didn't go outside and work as crazy as cold. <laughs> Uh, but now it's getting warm again, so I'm gonna I'm gonna right. start practicing again. Could happen. Yeah. Dan used to be an athlete, guys. He played basketball. He oh, did yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, I actually, organize this I better in the future. By the way, I, I realize I'm like just ask questions, and then there's just like there's 1,200 yeah. of you. So in the future, I'll find a way. To, uh, Cobra, Dan, and I will work out a way to do this better. But yeah, he, there might be a good way to do this within. I mean, we're gonna have a Discord uh, yeah. that we'll link you guys to later. We, we're gonna clean it up a little bit. We kind of already pre-made thanks cobra um, dan do you think flash is going to win asl this season as well yeah of course he's by far yeah, the best stupid question the get out of our get it no i'm just kidding no. we'll uh, have to talk more about asl in one of these these future weeks i got some good topics for that with the okay. maps and stuff thoughts on gsl groups real quick i guess uh, oh that's that's not a bad one that's right they just released here's the gsl groups all right ready for all this yeah Hold on a second, guys. You have any other questions in there, Jeff? Yeah, I'm looking. Here, I'll SC2 balance below GM, does it even matter? No. It no, really doesn't. It doesn't. You guys are making so many, I mean, and myself included, we're, we're, we're all making so many mistakes that the idea of balance being anything you should concern yourself with is, is silly. Yeah, and the truth be told, like, at the top level, uh, it obviously it matters more at the top level, but you can find a lot of mistakes in people's play at the top level a lot of the time. Yep. And the the places that you can find, uh, the easiest places to find imbalance, just a side note that I've found, um, if it is a very sharp attack at a very specific timing, that's one place that you can find imbalance. And then Supreme Lake is one place you can find imbalance. Everything else is very difficult because there's so many uh, moving pieces that can be changed. Uh, to change how you're doing in that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it, that's it's stuff like Supreme Late Game, like Swarm Host, right? It's like, oh, okay, this is a balance. Like, Protoss tried everything they could do and they couldn't break. <laughs> it's like, okay, you figure it out. But if you're a lower level, just practice because you're bad and there you are. Get better. All right, so yeah, the if we click on Code S. Then we have the groups down there. Someone said, what animal does Artosis keep in his mouth while he's playing StarCraft? Is it a grasshopper <laughs> or a mouse? <laughs> or a what, goldfish. It's definitely not a goldfish. Oh, don't be silly. I keep a baby hamster in there. All right. Oh, there's some sick groups in here, actually. Do we have this? Here, let me relink. You can never take this long on another question again, by the way. Which, which, are we talking about I the Codex question? I think still pulling up the group. Am I? <laughs> I have it all up. Um, we just scroll down a little bit there. 
What do you think, Jeff? What is the group of death here? I'm not looking at him. Oh. No, you're not very said you were doing it. No, I'm not. Uh, group G. Damn, Group G. Get out of here, Group G. We're going to drop in a lot of frames, guys. That's on my side this time. Sorry. I think we, have right, too, we'll get it. we might have too many windows open. So, Anyways, uh, real quick on the code S thing. Group G, Sue, Cure, Impact, TY. That's pretty sick. And then Group E kind of stands out. Stats, Emotion, Bill, and Rogue. And actually, Group F is pretty crazy. Poor Zanster's in there with Maru, Bunny, and Deer. So those are, uh, those are some wild groups. Pretty wild. <clears throat> um, all right, we'll grab like one or two more guys. Yeah. I don't know if it, how bad it's on your end, but yeah, my friends are dropping a little yeah. bit. Sorry about that, guys. Well, this is the the first go, so yeah, it's the first the one. Uh, has the pork chop situation been sorted? Yes. <laughs> it turns out Nathanius ratted out to Muslim, and it was to Muslim. We're kind of unceremonious. It was to Muslim. Yeah, really. Apparently. And he he just I guess he, in the thread he said outed, so that's confirmation. Damn. Because I heard some people start saying it was you, Jeff. I know. That's funny. I lived with Greg for uh, like three, two years there or whatever. Three years. and It's only when Huck was there that I got accused of eating a pork chop, I guess. But <laughs> um, All right. So let me grab one more. This guy keeps asking this. Okay. Can what you is please, it? Please, Dan, comment on the consistency of of a live the last couple of years, please. Um. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> he's, he is he's consistent. consistent. He's a very good player. It's a bit suspect at times. Uh, you know, he's just he's good. He works hard. There you go. I, I don't know what you want. You know, he's just the thing is, yeah, he's he's pretty consistent. He's consistently in the middle of the pack. Um, and occasionally he has a good showing, occasionally he has a bad showing. So for me, he's not really the most exciting guy to talk about. Well, but he's good. You did that guy a big pair. He's really happy that you did that. Yeah, I'm All glad. right, guys. I I could do that for him. That's going to do it. That is our first yep. show of we'll, the Pylon we'll show. We'll have a cleaner one next no. time with the q especially. I mean, maybe. Yeah, we'll organize the Q&A better so that we can... It, I realized uh, asking 1,200 people just randomly ask questions might have been a bad idea. Um, only yeah. after I did it. So we'll be learning. We'll, well how else do you learn? Go. Common yeah. sense isn't common sense. Until Dan said some really good stuff there that might cut out. Yeah. Oh, damn. Uh, so here's the part where I give the spiel. So, Dan, are you casting after, or are you uh, streaming after this? Yeah, I'll turn on my stream. Okay, so Dan's going to stream. I'm, gonna, I'm going to host him. Um, but this is where I tell you guys, this show is not sponsored. We are not paid to do this. And that means that if you are enjoying this content, if you believe in it, if you think this is something you'd like to see more of, please do consider clicking that follow button. This stream, this show will be on Dan's YouTube. Make sure and check out his YouTube. Dan's going to stream after this. So if you've got uh, the inclination, the time, and the money, please consider subscribing to him. Please subscribe here. If you can't do any of those things or you don't want to, do not feel bad. That does not mean anything bad about you. It just means consider it in the future. Or do what you can. So when we tweet this out, make sure and tweet it. When there's threads about it, make sure and talk about it. You don't even have to say you like it. You can say, oh, fucking like it. Okay, cool. You're posting yeah. the thread. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. There are ways to support us, and there are ways to, to, to make sure that this kind of content is something that we think is worth pursuing. And as long as you guys are enjoying it and supporting it, we're going to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be... Yeah, you already said it's going to be on YouTube, right? It, we're also doing it podcast. Uh, it's yes. going to be up just the audio version, um, you know, on like uh, iTunes and I think Cobra said maybe SoundCloud or something like that. Well, so yeah, there, there's a thread on Reddit and Team Liquid that has all of that linked. And then the, the Pylon show on Twitter is uh, mostly controlled by Cobra and he'll be very... He's doing a great job of being responsive. Yeah, so if you have any questions about where, how <clears> SoundCloud, all that kind of stuff works, it'll be there. You can, of course, reach out to us. We'll do it as well. Uh, and speaking of Cobra 2, by the way, our, our dream is that the show does well enough that um, we pay Cobra to be the producer, uh, yes. which I'm going to do anyways, but I just mean pay him more. Um, so just kind of keep that stuff in mind. And also, now we give our shout-outs. I'll go first, Dan. I want to I give a shout-out mm -hmm. to Cobra, the Dark Furs, uh, the Chat Utopian mods, a lot of these guys. And you guys for tuning in. 
Um, these people put in a lot of work. We've been working on this a while, but Cobra has been actually fucking crushing it and, and making sure this thing went on. This is also the first time he's produced a show uh, that I'm aware of. He might have some kind of weird porn history or something like that. I don't think so, <laughs> but maybe. And I think he did a pretty damn good job, and we're all going to get better at it. But I think for a first go, I was expecting this to just turn off halfway through, and we're like, okay, well, hey, it was the first show. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, so that didn't happen. So shout out to him. Um, Dan, do you have any shout outs? No, just, just what you said here. Um, definitely make sure to check out my next broadcast, uh, other than just my live stream, will be on Sunday, ASL. Oh, okay. Sunday KST. So, cool. uh, finish up that round of eight this next week and march towards that final. See if Flash can take the fourth in the row. And we'll talk about that some next week as well. And he is playing Terran, right? He, he didn't go through with the, I'm playing a different race. No, no, he's playing Terran, which is actually much harder than playing the other races because of what they did with the map pool. But we're going to talk about that next <laughs> week. Because that's cool. a really, that's a fun subject. Very good. All right, guys. Well, I'm off to Burbank tomorrow to be commentating the WCS Challenger with Fear Dragon and Nathania. So I'll be on stream there. Dan's got a broadcast on Sunday, and this show will return this coming Wednesday. Same time, same place. And uh, just to put it out there one more time, we're going to remain as consistent as we possibly can, but we will miss episodes. And please don't hate us, and please don't start talking about how it's gone forever. We want to do this. We're here. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. That's it for us. Thank you all so much. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and stuff, too. Uh, all the social medias. Just help us out. We love you guys, and we will see you next week, and we'll see you on our channels. Goodbye.